Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope that everybody had a good one. I'm trying to get this up or get the video feed up here so I can figure out what's going on. Awesome. All right, we're here, ready to go. Rob Lieber and Josh Wesley, Josh Wesley are here, both of them good Americans. Hello, boys. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, we had a, um, just got back from, uh, my Christmas break. I took a few days off and went out and visited with my in-laws. We had a great trip. Here's Elizabeth Glover calling me first thing on Thursday. Hello, Elizabeth Glover. You're on the actual calling show right now. This Thursday. See you later. Bye. So that was Elizabeth. She just called to say hi. Uh, I just got back from vacation with my in-laws, and I had a great time. Uh, we had a, a really good trip out to Utah, so I was out in the western part of the United States. Uh, when I landed in Vegas last week, uh, last Thursday, it was warmer in Kentucky than it was in Vegas, so we got that going for us. And then I re-landed back, and it was a balmy 12 or 13 degrees. So with that being said, without further ado, uh, again, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, and let's get going with the uh, questions here. Tyler Montgomery's here. He's a good American. Jeremy Davis is here. He's a great American. Jeremy, I ate at Columbia's last night, and I did not text you, and I apologize. Matt Mahan's here. Great American. Andrew Am Amoroso, hello from the Great White North of Central New York. I know it's cold there, Andrew. Thanks for joining us. You're a good American. Zane Markell, Zane's a good American. Just wanted to say, watched your video on GF6 Clutch Changes, and it was great, worked great, and great customer service. Thank you. Thank you, Zane. We appreciate that you all watch video. I'm sorry that you have to look at my ugly mug on that shop, but on these things, but nobody else at the shop will do it. So, uh, y'all's cat filter kit for an 05 Cummins. Would that help save the injectors? Um, Matt, that's actually a good question. The filter, the cat filter adapter is a really good, um, it's a really good piece. It's a little bit easier to change the filter if you run over to the cat filter. The thing about the cat filter uh, is it doesn't have actual water separator on it or, or a water separator per se to where you can actually open the drain valve on it and let the water out of the filter. Uh, all filters essentially are separators, but you just don't have that ability to drain them off. Uh, Fleet Guards has got, has got some really good vehicles, or some very good filters, so I can argue it either way, man, honestly. The cat would be a good filter for you. It's going to break, it's going to have a, a little bit better uh, filtration. Is that going to get you a little bit longer life on your injectors? Yeah, that's what we usually see. Uh, it's a little bit easier to change, but the Fleet Guard filter is a very good, very efficient filter that comes in stock location. As long as you keep it changed regularly, it should serve you in in that capacity. So uh, I think either way you go, man, it's going to make it's going to be a good choice for you for sure. Uh, Jared Klaus said, need more D-Max parts. I think we got a bunch of them, buddy, but we'll look at it. If there's something in particular you're looking for that we don't have, I apologize. We'll try to get it on the thing. Uh, Trent Shields is here. And Brianna Stanhope Dyer, both of them good, good Americans. Brianna actually just had a uh, happy birthday, so we can all... Um, we can all wish Bree a happy birthday. Jared Klaus, more business coming soon. I hope so, and thank you for the business that you've given us. Um, so like I said, I just got back from out west and uh, visited with my in-laws. We did some really good four-wheeling. Uh, my wife, her parents live in a little town in Utah called Holden. Uh, I think there's maybe four streets in all of Holden. Uh, so there's not a whole lot going on out there. You can pretty much just rip and run out there, and there's no... Uh, uh, you jump on a four wheeler and drive it down the road, and it's it's good. So uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a good way of life for sure. And then we stayed back in Vegas and flew out of McCarran. Uh, McCarran on the Wednesday after after Christmas was not too um, awful. Uh, crowded. I flew with my first firearm. I got a, a handgun for Christmas, and I'd never taken one through the airport before, uh, even as much hunting as I do. So uh, if you guys get a handgun or something for Christmas and you're flying, a little tidbit for you, as long as you've got a case and it's lockable and you disassemble the firearm, uh, for Allegiant for sure, I can tell you that they'll let you on there as long as the firearm is uh, is disassembled, no ammunition or whatnot with it. 
so, awesome. Uh, Jenny Stevens says, hi from Utah. I was just there, Jenny. You're a good American. Thank you so much. Zach Gerlach, Northern Wisconsin here. Best option for O3 Duramax that I want to change on injectors. Pure stock now with an EFI Live tow tune after I figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, Zach, if you're going to go ahead and do all eight injectors, I would suggest going with one company's for sure. Um, you can do a light set of injectors if you want to do like a 50 horsepower over. Uh, that's going to give you a little bit more power. Uh, the truck will totally handle that. Um, you know, it's just a really nice, efficient uh, injectors from some of the big companies that we use, uh, DDP, Industrial Injection, BD. We've got, you know, injectors, uh, S&S. Uh, we've got, you know, a horsepower over injectors. If that's the right direction you want to go. If you want to just go with stock, I would just suggest just a stock Bosch um, 986 injector, what we call them, or a, a, a white box for E-Man. Uh, so give us a call. We can help you out with all that. And we've got other companies that are a little bit more affordable uh, that we offer, like DTEC, Boss Tech, um, GB, I'll, I'll offer injectors for that. So it's a little bit confusing, but we can definitely help you um, get you going in the right direction. Zach, so give us a call and we'll get you helped out, man. Dylan Tipson says, we've got an 01 coming. starts good, but when I give it fuel and it starts missing and it dies, once it dies, it's hard to get started back. I was told it could be the VP. Any suggestions? And PSI gauge stays up at 30 PSI, does not move. Normally stays at 10 to 15 when it is running good. Uh, Dylan, for it to be at 30 PSI and then drop to 10 to 15, that's a little bit of an odd thing, so I don't know exactly what you've got going on right there, buddy. Um, the hard start could be over pressurization. If you've got 30 PSI running to the VP44 when you're actually cracking it, that's going to cause a hard start on the diaphragm. The miss that you could have could be a lack of fuel flow that you've got. Uh, so I think you've got a couple of different things going on there. I would start with trying to get your lift pump pressure straightened out uh, to where you are um, getting 10 to 15 PSI with the proper amount of flow. Give us a call. We'll be glad to help you with that. Matt, I don't know if they've got all the, the hoodies in. Man, I like I said, just got back in the office, so I don't know what we've got what we don't. Jared Bunce, do I need to spend over a thousand dollars to delete my 2014 Cummins exhaust program or delete parts? Um, Jared, that's kind of a complicated question. It depends on what you want from the truck. Actually, I'm going to run over here and hit the start recording button for, because I forgot to do that, Adam. Um, it depends on how far you want to go and what type of tune. If you want to go with the absolute lowest cost alternative, no, it's not, um, it, it's not necessary. We could probably get you in uh, that's that well 2014 now you're going to be a thousand dollars or whatnot we got a couple of different options Jared uh, give us a call I'll be glad to talk to you about that Brandon Lee said is there a CSP5 switch that hard wires and doesn't use a pass through 2013 Cummins and what EFI live tuner do you recommend is there a CSP5 switch that hard wires and doesn't use a pass through uh, Brandon for the 2013's we have uh, hard wire switches for EFI Live any tuner that's going to work for you man it just depends on what you want to go with so uh, we offer a bunch of different tuners I don't call tuners out by name here uh, whatever you want we've probably got so give us a call uh, Ronald Omar joined Ronald is a good American Eric Hobbs said what is the best injectors for a 2011 LML Eric if you're having uh, injector problems first thing I want to ask you is if you've had a CP4 grenade uh, if you've had a CP4 grenade, I would suggest putting all injectors in them. Um, go with whatever brand you want to. Um, with piezos, it's a little bit different of a ball game, but if you've, if you've had a CP4 uh, explode, there's a couple different things that you're going to need to do there. You're going to need to change your secondary regulator uh, and need to change the um, back leak filter uh, on the back of the head, so for sure. A uh, couple of different things going on there, man. Uh, if you want to go with a higher horsepower injector for your LML, uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about what you got for your truck. With piezo injectors, it's not really as much needed to go with a bigger injector, but it depends on what you're wanting, uh, Eric. To be honest with you, if you're trying to go for a thousand horsepower, then yeah, with, there's you know there's some stuff I need to do to help you there. Uh, if you're just wanting to stay with your stock, you know horsepower to 400 and 450 horsepower, we can totally do it on a stock injector. But I'd like to know whether you've had a failure or not. So uh, give us a call, Rob Rob Benoche, uh What's the best high pressure oil pump for a 99 F3? It de depends on what you want to do, Rob. If you're going for more horsepower, we offer the adrenaline pump. Uh, if you've got bigger injectors, and I think that'll that'll uh, flow the oil that you need. So um, I'm going to say adrenaline, not knowing any more than what you've got going on there. William Barker says, 12 valves set for three years. Anything special I need to do or look for before I get it back on the road other than a fresh oil change? Oil change, um, I would go ahead and take the tank down, drain the tank, clean the tank, put good fresh fuel in it before you start back. Um, 
Let's see, uh, overflow valve as well on the 12 valves. One of the first things that you're going to want to do in your priming sequence, once you get everything primed up, you want to make sure that that overflow valve, the spring is not broke inside of it. If you have a hard start, that could be the problem that you've got. So uh, what? just to check out, but I would say dump the tank, put fuel in it, put a fresh oil in it, start it and see what you've got. Uh, Zach, you're very welcome. Thank you, sir. Jerry Bruce, you're very welcome. Thank you. Sterling Harper just joined. He's a good American. He's out there in Utah. Dakota Libby, great man, offered to help any way good when I'm ready to call him. Absolutely, Dakota, thank you so much, appreciate it. Tyler Montgomery, bring the bourbon upstairs to my office. I'll, it'll do me more good than you. Tyler, hell no. Jason Long, Jason Long is a celebrity. He is here and a good American. Thank you for uh, joining Jason, but uh, uh, I'm still going to be a Braves fan. Justin R. Sharping. Justin, if I messed up your last name, I apologize. Do I need a bigger CP3 if I have 100 horsepower injectors? 2004 and a half Cummins. Justin, just without knowing exactly what all you've got done to your truck, it depends on how much duration that they've got inside the tune that you're running. Would a bigger CP3 help you? Yes. It's going to get you all the fuel flow that you need. So we would take your tuning completely out of the equation. Just with the size of injectors that you've got, Let's say, yes, go ahead and do a CP3. A bigger CP3 is actually going to make the truck more efficient, and you're going to be able to get the most out of the injectors again. You bought higher horsepower injectors. You want to get the most out of them. So make sure you do that by increasing your CP3 and your lift pump. Your lift pump, it goes without saying, make sure that you've got a bigger lift pump on the truck, uh, uh, something to support the bigger CP3 that you're going to go with. If your goal is like a 1,000 horsepower, um, you know, that crosses into a different line. Uh, you cross over into the, where you want to do uh, a big stroke pump or wind up doing uh, dual CP3s, and we'll talk about that just for a minute. I always suggest guys to just go ahead and do dual CP3s. It just gives you more room to grow inside the truck. But amazing things can be done on big single CP3s now, so uh, a couple different ways. So Corey B. Craft. Corey's a good American. What size turbo for my 6.7 Power Stroke 16 to make the most power and a minimal lag? At what point do I need to swap for the CP4 so a CP3? Uh, thanks. Uh, Corey, that's actually a good question. We've got a really cool project coming up, so I'm going to kind of dance around this question, Corey, just to be completely honest with you. Um, we have a really cool uh, build coming up. We're going to do a video about it today. 2012 uh, Ford F350 67. We're going to be doing twin turbos on it, and we're going to be doing the CP3 over the CP4 edition, which is really going to be cool. So I'm going to have a little bit more information on you uh, for you on that. We've got some really good CP4 uh, stuff for the Fords that you need to do to keep uh, the CP4 from grenading, but. Obviously, number one, you want to make sure that you're keeping constant fuel flow at the uh, truck, so make sure that you've got a good uh, quality lift pump on the vehicle. Now, addressing the turbos, uh, BD's got a great kit for the turbos. ATS has got a very, very good kit for the turbo uh, for a turbo replacement. And they're going to get you into uh, board frame turbos. Uh, some other companies out there that have that have got on their drop in kits. Really, really good stuff. So there's a lot of stuff out there right now for the six sevens. We're going to highlight that in here in the near future. So I invite everybody to watch those video, Corey. You especially. Uh, hope that I can get all your questions answered in the coming weeks for show for that. Colin Rainey, dilly dilly. James Sant Nichols, would you recommend Hot Shot Secret Stiction Eliminator for 60 diesels or use Rev X? I use Dello 1540. I use Dello as well. James, um, I think they're both good products, to be honest with you. We sell Rev X. Uh, uh, Hot Shot uh, Secret, I've done a little bit of research on that. I hope to have Hot Shot next year for you guys. Uh, it's supposed to be a very good oil additive. So, yes, absolutely. One of the two would be great for you for sure. I don't think there's going to be one that's going to be better than the other. Uh, Josh Wesley may chime in there and he may answer that for you. So, uh, Jason Tucker, 06 Cummins. I've got 60 horsepower injectors, fast 150, and a Smarty Junior programmer. Okay. Uh, Jason, did you ask a question before? I'm sorry if I missed that, man. Ethan Ayers joined. Ethan is a good American. Been really 12 valve stutter and shuts off after 2000 RPM. Ben, you might want to take a look at your overflow valve in that one. Um, for sure and check and make sure that you're holding correct pressure at the pump and you want to check your lift pump pressure as well but Jason Long you're very welcome thank you very much for everything you all do we couldn't couldn't do it without you guys um, Ben talk to you just a little bit more about what you've got going on there as well if you have done a, C, or a 7100 um, anything with your pump for check your timing on it make sure it hasn't slipped or anything like that John David Kazee 
Best aftermarket performance, 6.4 Ford Pistons. We have had very, very good luck with Miles offering. We have them on the website. Check it out. Uh, Dylan Purdy, OBS, 7.3 stock fuel, stock trans, stock turbo. Should I start with a 160 30 injector or just go ahead with 280-100 hybrid? I just don't want to – I just don't want to uh, – just don't want to blow my turbo up if I get hybrids. Dylan, you're going to be doing a lot of injector work there, and you're going to have very, you're going to be very, very compromised by the size turbo that you're running. Really think about going with a with a turbo upgrade there for sure, man. There's so much more there to be had by it. just change it a little bit on the turbo, brother. Which one of those? I would suggest probably the hybrid is probably going to be easier for you on your high pressure oil pump. Um, yeah, there's a lot to your question there. Matt Jones, how good are the Stealth 64 turbos for the 01 Duramax and what injections would I need to power that? Tow a lot, not one race. And we'll pull a be reliable. Matt, you can totally do the Stealth 64 turbo on the 01 Duramax with, the, with doing stock injectors if you've got the proper tuning. Uh, you really don't need to feel If you're wanting to get the most maximum out of the turbo, then yes, I would maybe think about doing a, a injector upgrade. But with that, you want to make sure that you're keeping good enough fuel flow to it so a CP3 upgrade may be needed too. So wrap all that up start with your tuning make sure that you've got the proper tuning for the turbo and you should be fine man ethan that airs how far out are you guys in the shop i'd like to get a stud each yard lay buddy we use our shop for r d and installation videos give us a call i've got some local guys that i can definitely turn you on to and we'll get you taken care of eric carpenter 0124 valve how do you tell if vp is going bad it could be anything eric it could be uh what codes are you getting what is the truck doing um a um, couple of different things there. Corvette size turbo, my brand name, just what's the best size. Corey B. Craft on that, you know, with what you're going to try to do to the truck, it really just depends on what tuning that you're going to wind up going with. Man, well, let's say 62 to 64 millimeter. Give me a call, man. I'll be glad to give you uh, give you some pointers there. Joe Martin, 06 comes. The front of my radiator's covered in grime, and I can't figure out why. I also replaced my tires. And that's why went away. Thanks for the advice. Hey, no problem, Joe, and I appreciate that. Joe, I wish I knew what the grime was on the on the radiator. Uh, it could be a whole lot of different things. If you've got a front crank seal leaking, it's probably coming from that. Um, it just, there's a lot of damn uh, gunk and stuff that gets up there. It could be from anything, man, so give us a call. I'll be glad to walk you through it. Jerry Klaus, 08 Duramax, full sensor delete, intake fast, 95 something, HNS tune, rail plug, stock injector, CB3. On performance, cuts out hard off the line, but then comes back on a launch, but rolling into it does not cut out an idea. CP3 problem could very well be. I'd like to know how many miles are on the truck. Uh, fast 95, I think you've got plenty of fuel there. It just depends on your tuning as well. I'd like to see a log on the truck uh, as well, Jared. So uh, might send me a log. Uh, might be able to get something done for you there. Ben Richie, you're very welcome. Truck's got twins on it, and when you push on it pretty good, it will stutter and almost shut off. So if you're using the key to shut down, and fires back up and will stutter and then die. Ben Richie, uh, I didn't see your original question, Ben. I apologize, man. Shame Harmon, 2016, F2, 56, 7, 30,000 miles. What's your thoughts on DPF delete before or after the warranty? Uh, Shane, if you're going to turn the truck into an off-road vehicle, which is what we talk about all the time, then I would definitely wait till uh, my warranty was out before I did that. Toss me that bottle so I can make hot toddies. You can forget it, Greg. Jason Tucker, 06 comes with 60 horsepower, 55, 150 smart engine. What's a good turbo for towing and performance? Um, that size injectors, and with just the Smarty Junior, man, I'll be honest with you, you could probably do, there's a couple of different turbos out there. You could do a 62 millimeter from any of the companies that we offer. Uh, Aurora 3000 would be a very good turbo for you. Uh, if you're wanting a little bit more horsepower inside ATS, you could jump into a 4000 there. Uh, you might have to swap out some tuning to get the most out of it. Uh, but a 62 millimeter charger is probably what I'd like to get you to stay with. Ethan Ayers, thanks, Way. Wasn't able to get to Judgment Day this year, but I'm coming next year for sure. Ethan, be great to have you, man. Dylan Pritchard, Dilly Dilly, Miles Campbell's here. Miles Campbell is a good American. He also had a birthday not too long ago. Happy birthday to Miles, and that's it. Ben, I'm worried about yours, man. I think I missed your question, or maybe you asked me a question and I forgot to answer. 12-valve stutter and shuts off after 2K RPM. All right, there we go. 
All right, now let's go back to yours, man. What did you say here? Ben Ridge, truck's got twins on it, and when you push on it pretty good, it will stutter and then almost shut off as if you're eating key to shut down. Then it fires back up, then will stutter and then die. A couple of different things going on there, man. I'd like to know what the lift pump pressure is on the truck when you've got that much going on, and I'm still going to probably lean to the overflow valve. If the overflow valve spring is compromised, then you're going to not keep good head pressure at the 7,100 pump. Boom, it can put you right there where you're at, man. So... Uh, for sure, you want to check that for us. No tires here. It's unnecessary. Joe Mark, why do some people, mainly old tires, discredit fuel additive and say it's unnecessary? Joe, the, the problem with it is, and I can't even speak to that, but I'll tell you that today's diesel fuel ULSD is, is void of lubrication. You definitely want to use um, a fuel additive at, at very bare minimum to get added lubricity to your fuel. The other things that you're going to get that goes along with that, uh, better cetane rating, trucks more efficient, going to get better fuel economy, clean your injectors, so on and so forth. We talk about it day in and day out. Don't worry about what the old timers are saying. You do whatever you think is the best thing for your truck. And I, for my truck, I run a fuel additive, and that's been the best for me. Um, uh, gonna make six, seven thousand, or ten k, or is it gonna be more? It'll probably be more than ten k for a thousand horsepower, Corey. To be honest with you, man, cat daddy, buddy. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go fishing, man. That's all I want to do. Is I want to go fishing. So, uh, quick Q and A today, guys. Uh, I'm running around with my damn ass on fire because I'm trying to get caught back up from being on vacation. Uh, but again, we want to tell everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. We've got New Year's coming up. Please be safe out there, guys. Don't do anything stupid. If you're going to do something stupid, don't get behind the wheel and drive because I did that a couple times in my life and it's not a good thing. So everybody, just have a good holiday. Be safe. We'll catch you next Thursday. I'm going to give away a bottle of uh, fuel additive treatment and I'm going to give it to, uh, you know what? I'm going to give it to Joe Martin. Joe Martin, you asked me about fuel additive, so you get a free bottle of fuel additive today. Thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate it, and Happy New Year to everybody.